For the past, I would say, three decades, you would hear white people talk about how unfair affirmative action is or how it discriminates against white people. Now, what's not really said is that white women have benefited from affirmative action more so than black men, and in some cases, more so than black women altogether. And this may turn out to be the biggest fraud in America's history. Now, affirmative action was initially for black Americans coming out of Jim Crow during the time period in which, you know, white men had unrestricted affirmative action. And I'm not even talking about from 1617 to 1965. I'm not bad. I'm not talking about from 1617 to, uh, yeah, 1965. I'm talking about specifically 1865 during Reconstruction to 1965. White men had full opportunity to participate in this country's wealth and pass down generational wealth without any obstacles. Now, if today's current white man, if you're, if you're, uh, if today's average current white guy, if your great grandfather did not pass down wealth or did not set aside funds for you, then yeah, you're probably fucked. But that does not have any bearing on black Americans who from 1865 to 1965 were interfered with and were tampered with by the government with these Jim Crow laws that prevented generational wealth from being passed down. So there is a distinction and there should be one drawn. At the end of the day, the current white men who believe they're being shafted while, you know, other people, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, and you know, in particular white women are able to benefit from affirmative action your great grandfathers already had their affirmative action, okay, during that time period. While black Americans, my great great grandfathers, had to sit back and watch um, those whites during that time accumulate great deals of wealth. You, look, man, you don't get a wealth gap of 13 times uh, the wealth that black Americans have, you don't get that by there being you know, an evil level playing field. When white America has 13 times the wealth of black Americans, that is structural, that's built in. And, and you will never be able to catch up with that because that's what Jim Crow laws have done. It allowed white folks to accumulate 13 times the wealth of black Americans. So let's hop into this article. When it comes to affirmative action, White women occupy rather a peculiar position. White women are the main beneficiaries of affirmative action policies and also the most likely to sue over them, at least when it comes to education. Now, keep in mind, the black feminists turned a blind eye and allowed these, these uh, white women not to only be counted as a minority, but to also receive damn near 80% of the goddamn affirmative action uh, benefits, leaving black men out. Now keep in mind, during this time period, I want to actually see the percentage of black Americans, let's say from eight, from 19, 1970, 1980, 1960, all the way up to now, what percentage of black Americans actually benefited from affirmative action? Whether going to college, whether it's career oriented, I will argue that the vast majority of black Americans have not even benefit, benefited from affirmative action at all, haven't even um, applied to even try to <laughs> seek any benefits from affirmative action. I could say, I would say that no more than 5 to 7 percent of the black American population has actually benefited from affirmative action. A good portion of black folks have to go to well, the most of the black folks that have <clears throat> benefit from affirmative action from affirmative action went to went to college. And when you look at the numbers, most black Americans don't even go to college. 
So your average black American person in your inner city, whether it's Baltimore, Chicago, New Jersey, have not even benefited from affirmative action when you really, really think about it. Let's hop back into this article. Okay. Today continues the trouble with white women series with a focus on white women and affirmative action. As Sally Khan cogently points out, cogently points out, women weren't even included in the original legislation that attempt to level the playing field in education and employment that we now refer to as affirmative action. The policies are known as employment equity in Canada and positive action in the UK. <clears throat> the first affirmative action measure in America was an executive order signed by President Kennedy in 1961 requiring that federal contractors take affirmative action to ensure that applicants are employed and employees are treated during and employees are treated during employment without regard to their race, creed, color, or national origin. So the initial affirmative action was to prevent uh, these contractors from discriminating against black American men who were trying to basically feed their family. So Kennedy st stepped in and made um, legislation, made legislation so that, it, what's that oh, executive order? Yeah, lost that word. So Kennedy signed the executive order saying that listen you contractors you gotta hire you gotta basically hire and treat black men the same way that you would treat any typical white person that was the basis of affirmative action it had nothing to do with gender or women at all but watch how white women were cleverly snuck into this and the next time you hear these white crackers talk about affirmative action and how unfair it is bring this to light on them because, see, white guilt hasn't even been scratched. Look, the black Americans have not even scratched the surface of white guilt yet. Because if you want to really scratch the surface on white guilt, you can show how throughout the decade. See, look, I'm the kind of black person, I tell the fucking truth. Regardless. I'm not here to seek validation or to make uh, white people like me. And look, I have no problem with white folks at all in, in the grand scheme of things at all no qualms no problems with them at all i have good relations with with the white folks that i know but that's not going to stop me from telling the god dang on truth i mean i've dated white women had sex with white women but the god's honest truth is the god's honest truth and that's the difference between me and me and other <laughs> that's the difference between me and other black dudes see i can fuck a, a non-black woman not get her pregnant and not look for no long-term type of relationship deal. But most of us, we want to, as soon as we get a hold of a, as soon as we get a, like, a hold of a nice relationship with a sexy white bitch, we want to get them pregnant, start a family, and just dilute ourselves and shit. Like, what the fuck? Why can't we just learn how to fucking have consensual, casual sex with non-black chicks without getting them pregnant or getting feelings? But that's just how, how a lot of us think. The bottom line is, Regardless of who I fuck, I'm not going to sit here and basically delude myself or, or be delusional under any circumstances. White women have not only benefited clearly from affirmative action, but white women were the root of many of the black lynchings and black bombings from 1900 to 1965. If you really want to get into white guilt and if uh, black Americans really wanted to shine light. You can show how insecure racist white guys would use lies told by white women to burn down black towns, to go in and lynch black men unjustly. Okay, you can cite countless cases where black men were lynched behind the words and lies of white women and there was no justice met. And these insecure cracker white boys just used those lies from white women to justify going into black towns and burning those black towns down that were self-reliant and non-dependent. I thought that's what these uh, hillbilly crackers wanted. But yeah, 
So if you really want to talk about white guilt and how, you know, uh, not only white men, but white women played a huge part in, uh, in destroying the wealth of black America, you can really start with uh, how the lies these white women told during the 1900s to 1965. Let the new generation of white uh, young women and young men know and see the stories because at the end of the day when you see those stories you're going to realize that black Americans were railroaded and there's don't it don't make no goddamn sense for the same white women who who caused those bombings and lynchings in 1900 to 1965 they have no business trying to get affirmative action when they were the a part of the root cause of, of black Americans losing generational wealth. Know what I mean? But these same white women are hopping on board of affirmative action when, when they're not a minority and when they were never basically held back from economically doing for themselves because, again, they were attached to white men who were enforcing those Jim Crow laws. All right. Let's get back over to this. The first affirmative action measure in America was an executive order. I already I read that. <sighs> Shit. All right, I found it. In 1967, President Johnson amended this, and a subsequent measure included sex, recognizing that women also face many discriminatory barriers and, hurt and hurdles to equal opportunity. Meanwhile, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 only included sex in the list of prohibited forms of discrimination because cons conservative opponents of the legislation hoped that including it would sway moderate members of Congress to withdraw their support for the bill. Hey man, if you really want to focus on white guilt, dude, you can really just spend, I would say, spend time researching between 1900 and 1925 all the uh, lies told by white women that got innocent black men lynched got you know self-sufficient black towns across the country burnt down okay if you want to focus on white guilt and you want to really tell the truth to these uh, lily white girls and I like I said I got no problem with white chicks but the history is the history. And in order for history not to repeat itself, even the white women today, born, let's say, from fucking 2000 up until now, they need to hear the truths and the the, the, the lies that were told during the 1900, 1900s that, that caused black towns to be burnt down and that caused um, black, innocent black men to be lynched. And yes... Your average typical uh, lily white person, when they hear these truths and they see these lynchings and the bombings, it's going to bother their conscience because they cannot fathom that they or the, that their great grandparents were just so evil. Yes, your great grandparents were the evilest people to walk this planet. Okay, they're burning in hell. All of your forefathers, each and every one of them, each and every one of your white forefathers, especially ones that own slaves, they are burning in hell. But, but most importantly, the, the, the white women that were born today, okay, and from now forward, need to be told the truth, no matter how much it hurts them, because that's the only way it's going to change. And also the white guy, the white guy is born today. They all have to be told the truth, because them repeating the same cycle that their grandparents and great-great-grandparents started will only lead them down a further road of white guilt and more of them burning in hell with, with, with their fucking uh, ancestors. <sighs> Alright, let's get back to this article, man. Let me see. When I was when I was started, shit, man, I lost my That's why I hate stopping because I lose my train of thought. Meanwhile, the Civil Rights Act of 1960. Alright, let's go down here. My, my own narrative intersects with affirmative action at key points. I was born in 1961, the year President Kennedy started requiring federal contractors to take affirmative action. 
when I started applying to colleges in Texas in the late 1970s, my father, who claimed Indian heritage, urged me to check the box for Native American or, my bad, on my college applications and to pursue student loans based on this for me, Fox identity. Years later, with PhD in hand, I began the often painful task of getting turned down for a tenure track job and being told by a white colleague on the search committee that they had to give it to the Latino who is a who was implied who, who, it, who it was implied was least qualified than I for the position. More about this in a moment. Now look, I don't support just hiring a black person because this person is black. No, fuck that, man. When I get on an airplane and I take a flight, I want to make sure this pilot knows what they're doing. Okay? I can give two fucks on the race of this pilot. I mean, if, if, if I'm drowning in the pool somewhere, I want that lifeguard to be qualified to hop in that pool and come fucking save me. Regardless of their race. So I'm not the kind of black person that's like, hey, you know, just because you're black, I want you to fucking be in a high position. No, because that's stupid and that's dangerous. I want the most qualified black person or the qualified person in general for the job. Preferably if they're black for me, yes, I would enjoy that 100%. But it's not a, a sticking point that's going to make me, you know, overlook common goddamn sense. So, yeah. I don't agree with affirmative action in the sense that, you know, it gives, it just ushers in the black person because of their skin complexion. No, I support affirmative action in the context that from 1865 to 1965, the Jim Crow laws that the government put in, put in place intentionally prevented generational wealth from being passed down. And I'm not even talking about, you know, from 1617 to, um... 1865 no I'm just starting from 1865 on forward but yeah that's why I would support affirmative action because of the government involvement when it came to stopping black Americans from obtaining wealth you're not going to look I mean you don't get numbers like uh, white Americans have 13 times the wealth of black Americans you don't get that 13 shit that 13 times the wealth of black Americans through, you know, natural um, economic growth within white America. No, that's structural. That's structural. Jim Crow made that so. Made it so that, you know, white folks have this huge uh, wealth gap margin. You can't even talk about uh, the wealth gap in black America or in America in general without talking about Jim Crow laws that, pre that, that allow these white folks to get this fucking two, three hundred year head start. <laughs> you can, again, you cannot talk about uh, wealth. And it bothers me when I hear dumbass, when I hear, when I hear us talk about generational wealth or talk about wealth in context to white people or in contrast to white folks, man. You cannot do that without mentioning the Jim Crow laws, 1865 and 1965, that really caused this huge generational guilt. That, that caused this huge wealth gap or generational wealth gap. The Jim Crow laws caused it. Like I said, you don't get 13, you don't get 13 times the wealth of black people based on a natural course of, uh, you know, due diligence and hard work. That's bullshit. You get that 13 by fucking manipulating shit, putting uh, barriers in place in which prevented black Americans from getting patents and basically having their own ownership during, again, the Jim Crow period. That's how the wealth gap got so huge and humongous. All right, back over here. So where's the evidence that we as white women are the main benef benefactories, beneficiaries of affirmative action policies? Well, there's lots of it but it can be hard to find as Jennifer Holschild points out affirmative action as culture war <sighs> the culture terrorist of race these are different books let's go down here the Department of Labor estimated hold on. 
According to the United States Labor Department, the primary beneficiaries of affirmative action are white women. The Department of Labor estimated that 6 million white women workers are in higher occupational classifications today than they would have been without affirmative action policies. So yeah, that's 6 million white women in positions today that they would not have been in if it were not for affirmative action. Now those 6 million white women, those positions were, were supposed to be for black men, starting back in the 80s. But the feminist movement hijacked the affirmative action and somehow manipulated things to turn white women into some type of minority class <laughs> that's, that, that, that's being discriminated against. Bullshit. All right. Let me see. The Department of Labor estimated that 6 million white women workers were in the higher occupational classification today than they would have been. All right. This pays off in dividends in the labor force and to mostly white men and families. You can see how some of these benefits accrue to white women in the following infographic from the Center for America Progress. All right, let's hit this. Let's figure this out. <clears throat> All right, so uh, while people of color individually and as groups have been helped by affirmative action, but data and studies suggest that women, white women in particular, have benefited disproportionately from these policies. Told you. Told you, man. In many ways, affirmative action has moved white women into a structural position in which they share more in common with white men than they do with black or Latino women. Damn! Here, here, take this little pill, you are black dumb feminist. I'm going to read this to you. I'm going to read this again. In many ways, affirmative action has moved white women into a structural position in which they share more in common with white men than they do with black or Latino women. Another study shows that women made greater gains in employment at companies that do business with the federal government, which are therefore subject to federal affirmative action requirements than in other companies, with female employment rising 15.2% at federal contractors, but only 2.2% elsewhere. Damn. And the women who <clears throat> and the women working for federal contractor companies also held higher positions and were paid better. Yeah, so here you got these broads complaining about not being paid at the same level as men equally, but white women have fucking co-opted affirmative action and are doing far well better than black men in the workforce. And they're damn near on par with the white men that they're complaining about not being uh, paid paid equal to. Man, this is this is all this is the biggest fraud that's been played on America. That's been played on America ever since the feminist movement. Again, this data often lumps all women together without distinguishing by race, so it's a bit of a fuzzy issue. Even in the private sector, white women have moved in. White, white women have moved in and up at numbers that far eclipse those of people of color. After IBM established its own affirmative action program, the numbers of women in management positions more than tripled in less than 10 years. Data, frequent, data from sub subsequent years show that the number of executive of color at IBM also grew, but not nearly at the same rate. See, so ultimately, affirmative action was switched from a way to, to help black Americans, specifically coming out of Jim Crow, improve themselves, to basically improving and allowing white women to jump into affirmative action and do better than black men or receive more of the benefits than black men had received. 
this is this is the biggest scam ever. And these same white chicks are are trying to sue for affirmative action being discriminatory. Given these incredible gains by white women, it might seem logical that this demographic would be among the biggest supporters of affirmative action. This is not the case, at least when it comes to education. It's white women who have been at the forefront of lawsuits brought to challenge affirmative action. When Elbegal Fisher sued the University of Texas at Austin, she claimed that the university had discriminated against her in the undergraduate admission process. Now, I know how this goes, and this happened because she did each. Well, when you when you fucking go to college or when you take your SATs, if you're white, black, Asian, or Hispanic, there's a certain uh, standard or number you gotta or or score you gotta achieve. So if you're Asian, you have to score this this um, percentage. If you're black, you score this percentage. Well, in this white woman's case she did not meet the requirements that white students usually meet when taking this test so she was denied right the same thing happened to that southeast asian uh indian dude that looks black but he's not and he sued for affirmative action he basically applied under the uh standard for asian even though he looks black and he's from India, he's not black, but he 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 had to basically score at the same level as a typical Asian. He couldn't cut it. So what he did was he said he was going to pass for black because the standard and the um, scoring for black, he fucking scored well beyond that. But he just didn't score good enough to the Asian standard. So this Southeast Asian looking fucking black dude from India, he he got in affirm he got in through affirmative action based on trying to pass for black. But then he flipped over he flipped it around and sued claiming that affirmative action was um was uh discriminatory. These are the fucking games that these folks play once they benefit from it. White women clearly benefit from affirmative action from affirmative action more than black men have. But these are the same ones, or the same one, yeah, the same ones that are fighting tooth and nail in court to overturn affirmative action. What well, it just shows you right here, six million white women are in positions today due to affirmative action that they would not be in if it wasn't for affirmative action. And then you got that Southeast Indian dude who actually benefited from affirmative action is trying to fight that shit. I mean, you just got some motherfucker that will stab you in the back. As you probably know, this case went all the way to the Supreme Court. What you may not know is that post bake 1978, the people suing universities for, the, for discrimination in the academic admission process have been white women. Abigail Fisher versus University of Texas, Barbara Grutter, uh, Jennifer Gretz, and Shirley Cherry Hopewood. Yeah, man, see, I'm not the kind of black guy that's just gonna kiss these, blindly kiss these white girls' asses and shit like that, because at the end of the day, I mean, you can't, hold on. All right, I'm back, lost my train of thought. But yeah, I'm not gonna, like, avoid reality and just stick my head in the sand and just not call this shit out. See, a lot of us as black dudes, if 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 you think that you're gonna be getting some pussy from one of these dumb, from one of these, you know, delusional white broads, you'll just bite your tongue and not tell the truth. No, nobody respects that. You'll get a lot more respect and more pussy when you stand up and you tell the fucking truth. But when you avoid reality, <laughs> motherfucker will just not even respect you. Let's get forth further into this. So, what's up with the white women? Why are white women playing the uh, aggrieved party when we, as a protected class, have gained so much from these policies? Let's go back to the story I mentioned of the tenure truck track job I did not get. I happened to know the Latina woman who was also in competition for this job. 
and we were identically well well qualified for that job. There was virtually no different no, no difference between us as applicants for that position. We both taught at the institution as part time or non tenured track facility faculty. Students like us both, we had the same number of publications at that point, somewhere between zero and one, and we both really, really wanted that job. She got it. I didn't. That's how it goes. On the next thing, on to the next thing. And as life does with such disappointments today, I'm grateful to have not gotten that job. But I digress. The fact that white the fact that the white person on the search committee made a point of telling me that they had to give the job to her is, in my view, a manifestation of colorblind racism. Part of what he was saying to me was, if things were fair, if there weren't affirmative action, you would have had this job. In a way, he was inv inviting me to say later in the telling of this of the story yeah, I'm getting tired of reading this shit I didn't get the job because of a Latino this is precisely the form of colorblind racism alright let's move on I chose to resist such a retelling of that story because it is not true I resist such a retelling because it supports other untruths about who is deserving qualified and should be in the leadership position but I know that such resistance is relatively rare among white women and I think this is where some of the explanation begins for why it is white women who are suing to challenge affirmative action. To risk starting the obvious here, I think that what's happened with Abogal Fisher is that despite her incredibly privileged structure, structural position within the U.S., she still feels aggrieved because her expectations growing up as a white girl that she was entitled to an education at the top university in her state even though she didn't have the grades to qualify yeah so regardless of affirmative action she didn't like i said earlier she did not meet the standard that your typical white person meets during that testing but she just wanted to point to affirmative action when this bitch she would not have graduated oh my bad she would not have um regardless she she her score was so fucked. Her score was not at the level that it should have been in order to move on or be accepted into that school. Whether affirmative action existed or not. When confronted with the reality that she didn't get into her top school, the explanation that occurred to her is that some person of darker complexion and lesser qualification had taken her place. Fisher, like so many white women of her generation, believe that their peers who are Black and Latina have it easy when it comes to getting into college, as if they only had to send in their photograph with their application. Contrast Fisher's perceived struggle with the Pound I 2 AM Harvard campaign launched by social media. I am fuck, I'm done, man. I want to read more. Hold on. Take a break. Hold on. 